Nam Gori clung tightly to his harness as the flying disc entered Earth's atmosphere. The turbulence shook his scaly frame, but he dared not utter a sound of discomfort. As a low-ranking foot soldier, it wasn't his place to question or complain. He simply followed orders. Through the disig's viewing port, Nam Gori watched the alien world grow larger. Its vast oceans and sprawling landmasses were unlike anything on Croatia. The High Priestess had declared this planet ripe for conquest, and who was he to argue? As they descended, Nam Gori's gaze fixated on a particular section of land. The tactical display identified it as Kansas United States of America night had fallen over this region, and in the darkness, he could make out clusters of lights indicating human settlements. Suddenly, a cacophony of explosions erupted across the landscape. Nam Gori's heart raced as streaks of light shot into the sky, bursting into dazzling displays of color. His mandibles clicked nervously as he awaited orders from his superiors. The ship's comm system crackled to life. All units, be advised came the voice of the fleet commander. The humans have detected our approach and are launching anti-air defenses. Prepare for immediate engagement. Nam Gori's clawed hand instinctively tightened around his weapon. He didn't understand how the humans had known they were coming, but it didn't matter. He would fight as he was trained to do. As their disc maneuvered to avoid the perceived attacks, Nam Gori caught sight of other Croatian ships emerging from stealth. The invasion force he'd been part of for so long was finally revealing itself. The humans' colorful explosions continued, seemingly unaware of the true threat above them. Nam Gori found their defenses puzzling they seemed more focused on beauty than destruction. But such thoughts weren't for a lowly foot soldier like him to dwell on. Warrior cast. Prepare for deployment barked his immediate superior. Nam Gori took his place near the disig's exit ramp, ready to spill onto the planet's surface and begin the conquest. As midnight struck in the human calendar year 2028, the Croatian attack began in earnest. Nam Gori charged down the ramp, weapon at the ready, into a world that would never be the same again. The first rays of dawn illuminated a world in chaos. Nam Gori, crouched behind the smoldering wreckage of a human vehicle, watched as Croatian forces laid waste to the city before him. The humans called it Kansas City, but to Nam Gori, it was just another target. Discs swooped overhead, their energy weapons carving swaths of destruction through human structures. Nam Gori's unit pushed forward, securing block after block with ruthless efficiency. The humans fought back with primitive projectile weapons and armored vehicles, but they were no match for Croatian technology. As days turned to weeks, reports flooded in from across the globe. Nam Gori listened with a mix of pride and bewilderment as the ship's announcements detailed victory after victory. Countries with names he could barely pronounce France, Germany, Russia, China all capitulated in the face of Croatian might. But the United States remained defiant. Nam Gori couldn't understand it. Why did these humans resist when others had so readily surrendered? His superiors seemed equally perplexed, constantly revising strategies to deal with the unexpected resistance. One muggy afternoon, as Nam Gori's unit advanced through the ruins of a place called St. Louis, he witnessed the tenacity of the American humans firsthand. A group of civilians, armed with nothing more than improvised weapons, charged their position. Nam Gori's comrades cut them down easily, but their faces haunted him. The determination in their eyes was unlike anything he'd seen before. Months passed, and the war ground on. Nam Gori participated in devastating attacks on human population centers New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. Each victory added to the Croatian sense of inevitable triumph, yet the humans kept fighting. During a rare moment of respite, Nam Gori overheard two of his superiors discussing the war's progress. The human's resistance is costly, but ultimately futile, one said. Our victory is assured. Indeed, replied the other, though I must admit, their tenacity is. Unexpected. The High Priestess herself is taking an interest in understanding their psychology. Nam Gori quickly averted his gaze, knowing it wasn't his place to listen to such conversations but the words stuck with him as he returned to the front lines. As the first year of the war came to a close, Nam Gori stood atop a hill overlooking a vast expanse of burned farmland. 
The humans called this area the Midwest, and it had once been their breadbasket. Now it was a scorched wasteland, a testament to Croatian power. Yet even as he surveyed the destruction, Nam Gori felt a twinge of unease. The Americans continued to fight, continued to surprise them at every turn. And deep down, in a part of his mind he dared not acknowledge, a treasonous thought took root. What if the Croatians had underestimated these humans? Years passed, and the war against the humans dragged on. Nam Gori, once a fresh-faced recruit, had become a battle-hardened veteran. His scales bore the scars of countless engagements, each a reminder of the humans' relentless resistance. The Croatian war machine ground forward, but at a terrible cost. For every city they raised, for every state they conquered, the Americans extracted a heavy toll. Nam Gori had watched countless comrades fall to human weapons, improvised traps, and desperate last stands. One particularly grueling campaign led Nam Gori's unit through the ruins of what had once been called the South. They slogged through swamps and dense forests, fighting for every inch of territory. The humans here fought with a ferocity that seemed to border on madness, using the terrain to their advantage in ways that confounded Croatian tactics. During a rare lull in the fighting, Nam Gori found himself guarding a makeshift prisoner camp. He observed the captured humans with a mixture of curiosity and unease. Despite their defeat, many still held themselves with a stubborn pride that he couldn't comprehend. An older human male caught Nam Gori's eye. The prisoner's face was weathered, his eyes sharp despite his obvious exhaustion. To Nam Gori's surprise, the human spoke. You think you've won, don't you, the man said, his voice carrying a drawl Nam Gori's translator struggled to interpret. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Just wait till you meet the real crazies. Nam Gori chittered a warning, but the man's words stuck with him long after the prisoners were transferred to a more secure facility. As the war entered its fifth year, Nam Gori's unit was reassigned to the agricultural offensive. The high command had determined that destroying the humans' food supply would finally break their will to fight. Day after day, Nam Gori watched as fertile fields were reduced to ash, as orchards were uprooted and burned. The scale of destruction was beyond anything Nam Gori had previously experienced. Millions of acres of farmland vanished under Croatian weapons fire. He tried to rationalize it as a necessary evil, a means to end the war quickly. But the sight of wasted food, of starving human civilians fleeing their ruined homes, settled like a stone in his gullet. During one of these operations, Nam Gori's unit came under attack from a human guerrilla force. As energy bolts and bullets crisscrossed the burning wheat field, Nam Gori found himself face to face with a young human soldier. For a moment, they stared at each other, weapons raised. In the human's eyes, Nam Gori saw not fear, but a burning determination that shook him to his core. The moment passed, and the battle resumed. But that brief connection lingered in Nam Gori's mind, feeding the doubts that had been growing since the war began. As his unit regrouped after the skirmish, Nam Gori overheard his commander speaking with a high-ranking intelligence officer. These humans, the commander hissed, frustration evident in his voice. No matter how many we kill, no matter how much we destroy, they keep fighting. It defies all logic. The intelligence officer nodded grimly. The high priestess is becoming concerned. This war has gone on far longer than our initial projections. We may need to consider more extreme measures. Nam Gori felt a chill run down his spine at those words. What could be more extreme than what they had already done? And why couldn't they break these humans? As he settled in for another night on this alien world, Nam Gori found himself, for the first time in his life, questioning the wisdom of his superiors. The unthinkable thought that had taken root years ago now bloomed in full. What if the Croatians were wrong about this war? What if they were wrong about the humans? The war had entered its seventh year, and the Croatian high command was growing desperate. Nam Gori could sense the shift in tactics, the increased urgency in their orders. The humans had been pushed back, yes, but they hadn't broken. Now, it seemed, the Croatians were determined to end this war once and for all. Nam Gori's unit was deployed to what the humans called the Midwest, a vast expanse of land that had once been their agricultural heartland. Now it was a scarred battleground, 
the earth churned by explosions and the ruins of human cities dotting the landscape. Intelligence reports indicated that the Americans had gathered a massive armored force for one last, desperate counterattack. Nam Gori's superiors were confident that repelling this assault would finally crush the humans' will to fight. As dawn broke on the day of battle, Nam Gori took his position among the Croatian defensive line. The air thrummed with the energy of their advanced weaponry, and the sky was filled with their flying discs, ready to rain destruction upon the human forces. The ground began to shake, and on the horizon, Nam Gori saw them hundreds, perhaps thousands of human tanks, advancing in a great steel wave. The sight was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. How could the humans still muster such strength after all these years of devastation? The battle that followed was unlike anything Nam Gori had experienced before. The humans fought with a ferocity that bordered on madness, throwing themselves against the Croatian lines with reckless abandon. For hours, the two forces clashed in a maelstrom of fire and metal. Nam Gori's weapon grew hot in his claws as he fired again and again, watching human tanks explode and soldiers fall. Yet for every human that fell, another seemed to take their place. The air was thick with smoke and the acrid smell of burning fuel. Just when it seemed the human assault might break through, the Croatian commanders unleashed their secret weapon. A pulse of energy rippled across the battlefield, disabling the human vehicles and electronics. In an instant, the tide of battle turned. Nam Gori watched as the once mighty human army began to retreat. Tanks sat useless on the field, their crews abandoning them to flee on foot. The Croatian forces pressed their advantage, cutting down the retreating humans with ruthless efficiency. As the dust settled and the last shots faded away, Nam Gori surveyed the battlefield. The ground was littered with the broken remains of human war machines and the bodies of fallen soldiers. The Croatians had won a decisive victory, perhaps the most significant of the entire war. Amid the post-battle cleanup, Nam Gori overheard his commander speaking to another officer. This is it, the commander said, his voice filled with satisfaction. The humans have expended the last of their strength. Victory is finally within our grasp. The other officer chittered in agreement. Indeed, our intelligence suggests they have no more reserves, no more tricks. The war is as good as won. Nam Gori wanted to believe them. After seven long years of brutal conflict, the thought of victory, of finally returning home, was intoxicating. Yet something nagged at him, a feeling he couldn't quite shake. As he helped secure the perimeter of their new position, Nam Gori's gaze was drawn to the horizon. There, barely visible in the fading light, he saw something that made his blood run cold another human army. But this force was different. Even from a distance, Nam Gori could tell that these soldiers moved differently, carried themselves with a wild energy that he had never seen before. They flew a flag he didn't recognize white, with a red X. Infusion rippled through the Croatian ranks. How could the humans have another army? Where had these soldiers come from? Nam Gori's commander began barking orders, reorganizing their forces to face this new threat. As Nam Gori took up his new position, he couldn't shake a sense of foreboding. The humans had surprised them so many times before. The new human army advanced with a speed and ferocity that caught the Croatian forces completely off guard. Nam Gori, still reeling from the previous battle, found himself thrust into a conflict unlike any he had experienced in the seven long years of war. These new soldiers moved with a chaotic energy that defied conventional tactics. They whooped and hollered as they charged, their voices carrying across the battlefield in a cacophony of battle cries and what seemed to be laughter. Ma. Nam Gori's commander barked orders, trying to organize a defense, but the Florida men, as Nam Gori heard them called, seemed to operate without any discernible strategy. They attacked from all angles, using weapons and techniques that left the Croatians baffled. One Florida man rode into battle on the back of a large, scaled creature that Nam Gori recognized as native to this region. The beast snapped and thrashed, tearing through Croatian lines with terrifying ease. Nam Gori watched in horror as one of his comrades disappeared into the creature's massive jaws. By the high priestess chittered a nearby soldier, they've weaponized their own planet's fauna. The strange weapons didn't stop there. 
Nam Gori ducked as a Florida man hurled what appeared to be a primitive projectile weapon, only to watch in shock as it exploded into a swarm of stinging insects. The air filled with screams as Croatian soldiers flailed wildly, their exoskeletons offering little protection against the tiny attackers. Another group of Florida men advanced under the cover of a noxious cloud. Nam Gori's olfactory sensors went haywire, unable to process the combination of chemicals. Through streaming eyes, he saw the humans wearing makeshift masks fashioned from what looked like undergarments. Day. Fall back, Nam Gori's commander shouted, his usual composure shattered. Regroup and his words cut off as a Florida man swung what appeared to be a living reptile, like a flail, catching the commander across his mandibles. Confusion reigned as the Croatian lines broke. Their usual strict hierarchy crumbled in the face of the Florida men's unpredictable assault. Nam Gori found himself retreating alongside soldiers from other units, their carefully planned formations forgotten. As they fell back, Nam Gori witnessed sights that defied explanation. A Florida man wrestled a Croatian war beast barehanded, somehow pinning the genetically engineered monster in a hold. Another group had commandeered a Croatian hover tank, piloting it with reckless abandon while blaring what Nam Gori's translator identified as death metal music. Perhaps most terrifying was the Florida man who charged into battle wearing nothing but a coating of some viscous, flammable liquid. He ignited himself, turning into a sprinting inferno that set Croatian equipment ablaze and sent soldiers fleeing in panic. Nam Gori's analytical mind struggled to process what he was seeing. These humans defied every tactical principle, every rule of engagement he had ever learned. They seemed to embrace chaos itself as a weapon, turning the very unpredictability that had been the humans' weakness into their greatest strength. As the sun began to set on the battlefield, Nam Gori found himself alone, separated from his unit. The sounds of combat still echoed across the war-torn landscape, punctuated by the occasional explosion and what sounded disturbingly like gleeful laughter. Crouched behind the wreckage of a Croatian transport, Nam Gori's mind raced. How had it come to this? They had been so close to victory, and now, now everything had changed. These Florida men had done the impossible they had broken the Croatian war machine not through superior technology or numbers, but through sheer, chaotic audacity. In that moment, as the realization of defeat settled over him, Nam Gori felt something he had never experienced before doubt in the infallibility of the High Priestess and the Croatian hierarchy. If they had been so wrong about the human's capacity to resist, what else might they have misjudged? The sound of approaching footsteps snapped Nam Gori back to reality. He gripped his weapon tightly, preparing for what might be his final stand against these unconquerable Florida men. The footsteps grew louder, and Nam Gori braced himself for the inevitable confrontation. But instead of the wild whoops of Florida men, he heard the familiar chittering of his own kind. A small group of Croatian soldiers stumbled into view, their once pristine exoskeletons now scuffed and dented. Soldier. Report your status the highest ranking among them demanded, though his voice lacked its usual authority. Nam Gori straightened up, ingrained obedience overriding his momentary doubt. Separated from my unit during the chaos, sir. What are your orders? The officer's mandibles clicked in agitation. Orders? Our command structure has collapsed. The Florida men have overrun our primary base of operations. We're, we're retreating. The word hung in the air, alien and uncomfortable. Croatians didn't retreat. They conquered, they dominated, they won. Yet here they were, a ragtag group of survivors fleeing from an enemy they couldn't comprehend. As they moved through the battlefield, evidence of their defeat was everywhere. Croatian flying discs lay crashed and smoking, their once immaculate hulls covered in crude graffiti and what appeared to be bite marks. Weapons of unimaginable destructive power had been repurposed into bizarre contraptions that spewed foam or launched projectiles that exploded into clouds of glitter. They passed a group of captured Croatian soldiers, being guarded by Florida men who seemed more interested in teaching their prisoners to do something called a keg stand than in traditional interrogation techniques. Nam Gori couldn't decide if this was a form of psychological warfare or simply madness. As night fell, the small band of Croatians found themselves pinned down by sporadic fire from Florida men positions. 
The acrid smell of gunpowder mixed with something Nam Gori's olfactory sensors identified as burning rubber and aerosolized cheese product. We need to surrender one of the younger soldiers chittered, his voice trembling. We can't win against. Against this. The officer rounded on him, mandibles flaring. Surrender? Croatians do not surrender. His words were cut short as a Florida man burst from the underbrush, wielding what appeared to be a live snake as a lasso. With a whoop of joy, he ensnared the officer and dragged him off into the night, leaving the rest of the group in stunned silence. Nam Gori found himself suddenly in command, faced with a decision that would have been unthinkable mere days ago. We. We surrender, he said, the words feeling foreign in his mouth. As if summoned by his declaration, a group of Florida men materialized from the darkness. Their leader, a burly human with a wild beard and wearing nothing but tattered shorts and a cape made from an alligator skin, stepped forward. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit. Looky here, boys. We got ourselves some bona fide alien gators, the man exclaimed, his voice carrying a thick drawl that Nam Gori's translator struggled to interpret. Nam Gori raised his arms in what he hoped was a universal gesture of surrender. We yield to your superior tactics, he managed, still trying to process the reality of their defeat. The Florida man leader grinned, revealing a gold tooth. All you, shucks, it weren't nothing. Why all just caught us on a slow Tuesday? Now, who's up for some gator wrestling? Figured we'd give you all a proper Floridian welcome. As Nam Gori and his fellow soldiers were led away, presumably to some form of prisoner camp though with these humans, he couldn't be sure, he caught sight of the broader battlefield. Everywhere, Croatian forces were laying down arms, overwhelmed by the sheer, chaotic force of the Florida men. Flying discs were being repurposed into makeshift barbecue pits, their energy cores now powering what appeared to be massive sound systems, Captured Croatian soldiers were being taught to do something called the chicken dance while their Florida captors cheered them on. In that moment, Nam Gori realized that the Croatians hadn't just lost a battle or even a war. They had encountered a force of nature, a level of unpredictability and adaptability that their rigid hierarchical society could never hope to match. As he was ushered into a transport alongside his fellow prisoners, Nam Gori found himself wondering about the future. What would become of the Croatian Empire now? And more importantly, what would the High Priestess say when she learned they had been defeated not by superior technology or numbers, but by what the humans called Florida Man? Dawn broke over a transformed battlefield. Nam Gori, along with his fellow Croatian prisoners, had spent the night in what the Florida Men called a tailgate party in experience that had left him more confused than any military briefing ever had. As Nam Gori surveyed the scene, he marveled at how quickly the humans had adapted Croatian technology to their own inexplicable purposes. Flying discs now sported garish paint jobs and blasted something called Jimmy Buffett music. Or beasts that had once terrorized human cities now wore floral lice and gave rides to cheering Florida men. A commotion near the center of the camp caught Nam Gori's attention. A strange flying machine, not a disc but something with whirling blades on top was descending onto a cleared area. The Florida men seemed to recognize it, their usual chaotic energy focusing on this new arrival. As the dust settled, a human emerged from the machine. This one was different from the Florida men. He wore a crisp suit and a wide-brimmed hat, his bearing more formal than the boisterous soldiers around him. That there's the ambassador from Texas Namgori heard one Florida man explain to another. Reckon he's here to make things all official-like. Nam Gori watched as the ambassador surveyed the scene, his expression a mixture of awe and exasperation. When he spoke, his voice carried a different kind of drawl than the Florida men. Well, I'll be damned, the ambassador said, shaking his head. When they said Florida had turned the tide, I thought they were pulling my leg. But why all really did it? The Florida men cheered, raising bottles of something called PBR in salute. The ambassador made his way through the camp, eventually reaching the area where the captured Croatian leaders were being held. Nam Gori, by virtue of being the highest ranking survivor of his unit, found himself part of the group brought before the human diplomat. Gentlemen, the ambassador addressed them, tipping his hat. On behalf of the United States government, I'm here to discuss the terms of your surrender. 
Nam Gori and his fellow officers exchanged glances. This, at least, was familiar territory negotiations terms, the formal dance of diplomacy. But before any of them could speak, a Florida man interrupted. Aw, oh, come on now. We ain't gonna make it all boring, are we? I say we settle this with a good old-fashioned gator wrestling contest. The ambassador pinched the bridge of his nose, sighing. Now, Bubba, we've talked about this. International incidents can't be resolved through reptile-based combat. As the Florida men grumbled their disappointment, the ambassador turned back to the Croatians. Now then, shall we proceed with the formal surrender? What followed was a surreal experience for Nam Gori. The precise, formal language of diplomacy stood in stark contrast to the chaotic backdrop of celebrating Florida men. Terms were discussed, agreements were made, and slowly the shape of the post-war world began to emerge. As the proceedings concluded, Nam Gori found himself face to face with the Texan ambassador. I must ask Nam Gori ventured, his curiosity overcoming his usual reserve, how did you humans do it? How did you defeat us when all seemed lost? The ambassador chuckled, adjusting his hat. Well, son, I reckon that's the thing about us humans. Just when you think you've got us figured out, we'll surprise you. And there ain't no one more surprising than Florida man. As the ambassador turned to leave, Nam Gori's sensitive hearing picked up the human's muttered words how come them Floridians got all the fun. Should have left some of these crocs to Texas. Watching the ambassador board his strange flying machine, Nam Gori reflected on the incredible turn of events. The Croatian Empire, with all its technology and military might, had been brought low not by superior firepower or tactics, but by the sheer, unpredictable chaos of human nature Florida man nature, to be precise. As the flying machine lifted off, kicking up dust and scattering empty PBR cans, Nam Gori realized that his world would never be the same. The rigid hierarchies and unquestioning obedience of Croatian society seemed hollow now, in the face of human adaptability and resilience. Whatever the future held, one thing was certain the universe would have to reckon with humanity in all its chaotic Florida man glory. And Nam Gori, despite everything, found himself looking forward to seeing what these unpredictable humans would do next. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you loved it. Please remember to subscribe if you did like it so you can see more videos like this. And please give us a like and a comment too. I'll see you in the next one.